Greetings, I am Minister Christopher A. Darby, and I'm honored to facilitate this week's Bible lesson. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118.24 I want to thank God and the Holy Spirit for their presence today. Also give thanks and honor to our pastor, Moderator Emeritus J.A. Molan, for giving me this opportunity to teach. And thanks to the other ministers, officers, and the members for your prayers and support during these studies. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you promise to send your Holy Spirit to teach us all things. As we read and study your word today, allow it truly to touch our hearts and to change our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The topic of today's lesson is, what does it mean that a Christian is a new creation? What does it mean that a Christian is a new creation? Our scripture text for this lesson is 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. According to 2 Corinthians 5.17, a great change takes place in the life of one who is a Christian. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Several questions should cross the minds of the new believer concerning the change that has taken place. Number one, what does this change mean? Number two, what position does this new creation hold in the eyes of God? Number three, what type of life is he or she to lead? And number four, how does this change affect his or her relationship to things pertaining to one's old way of life? In Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, we find the answers to such questions. Note, first of all, that a Christian is described as sitting with Christ in heavenly places. Hold that thought for a minute. Once you become a new creation, you are now sitting with Christ in heavenly places. Well, let's look at our former condition. In our former condition, we were dead in sin, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. We were quite active, walking and following after the world, Satan, and the flesh. But our current condition, after we became a new creation, out of love, mercy, and grace, we who were dead are now alive. Now we are blessed to be raised with Christ. And, as I said earlier, we are now seated with Him in heavenly places. The definition of heavenly places literally means the heavenlies, which is found only in the book of Ephesians. This heavenly place most likely refers to the spiritual realm, as contrasted to the physical realm. In the spiritual realm, we enjoy blessings in Christ. In the spiritual realm, Christ rules at God's right hand. In the spiritual realm, we sit with Christ. In the spiritual realm, principalities and powers learn of God's wisdom by the church. In the spiritual realm, we wrestle against spiritual wickedness. Now, let's compare our position with Christ in the heavenly places. I want you to note that Christ is seated at God's right hand. And we are now seated together with Christ, according to Ephesians 2 and 6. Our position with Christ certainly warrants a proper frame of mind. We are to seek those things which are above. And we are to set our minds on things above as a new creation sitting with Christ in heavenly places ought to affect the way we think, but also the way we behave for as a new creation, we are to be walking in a manner that is worthy 
of our calling. Wow. The purpose of our calling is to be holy and without blame and to be his beloved children through adoption. Well, a walk worthy of our calling is one in which we walk in love. We've got to walk in love as Christians, as beloved children imitate their father, following Christ's own example of sacrifice is one in which we walk as light, living lives holy and without blame, as light exposing the deeds of darkness by way of contrast. Understand that time is short. Understand that the will of the Lord, walking in love as light, as wise, would not be without controversy in the midst of a dark and perverted world. And so a new creation is to be standing firm in the battle. Now, the nature of our battle that we are engaged in is a spiritual warfare. And the battle is taking place in heavenly places, which we've just said is the spiritual realm. Our foe, the very things we had previously followed, thus the need to be strong. Well, what are we to be strong in? To be strong in the Lord. To be strong in the power of his might. In order to stand strong, we need to put on our protective armor. Yes, you know what I'm referring to now, the nature of our armor. We are given the armor of God, which we must put on in reference to Ephesians chapter 6, 11, and 13. This armor is adequate for a strong offensive battle. Our waist should be girded with truth, breastplate of righteousness, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We should put on a shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. We must put on the helmet of salvation, pick up the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Now note the like of protection from behind. And this implies that we must be committed and standing firm against the enemy and that to retreat ensures defeat. In conclusion, when a person becomes a new creation, it affects how he or she sits, stands, and walks, sitting with Christ in heavenly places, and walking in a manner worthy of our calling. We must also stand firm in battle and compare this to the wicked person who is not blessed by God as described in Psalm 1, 1 and 2. Walking in the counts of the wicked, standing in the path of sinners, sitting in the seat of scoffers. What a remarkable contrast. Truly, old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Has this proved true in our own lives? Give careful thought to the how and where you are sitting, walking, and standing if you desire to be a new creation in Christ. The topic of today's lesson has been, what does it mean that a Christian is a new creation? Our scripture text, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. Let us pray. God, we thank you for reminding us through your word that as a new creation in Christ, we can now sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah for our new position of authority. We pray now for the ones who have received this message today that we will make the necessary adjustments in our individual lives to receive and believe who we are and whose we are in Jesus Christ. We lift up in prayer our pastor, Pastor J.A. Molan and his wife, Lady Felicia Molan, along with their family. We pray, Lord, that you will lead them, guide them, and protect them. Give wisdom and understanding to the officers, leaders, and members of the Greater Peace Baptist Church. And we ask blessings upon those who will visit us to our weekly Bible study and worship experience. We offer salvation today to anyone who may be listening 
to receive you today as their personal Savior. If you're listening right now, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Thank you, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless and keep you until our next Bible study is our prayer.